Wait! Don't go any further! Stop! Hey guys, how's it going? How's everybody doing? Welcome to my channel. Uh, please remember, don't forget to hit that like button if you like what I do, want to see more. I appreciate it. Thank you very much. That helps me more than anything else. Uh, but as you can see, we have here Mr. James Love, James C. Lovett. Um, and I have to emphasize again, uh, there is nothing in this video that is true. Absolutely nothing. There are no facts. There's nothing even resembling a fact. So please keep that in mind while, while we watch this. There is no facts. There is no truth. There is nothing here but smoke. Guys, it's your boy, the Bad Wolf. All right, so, well, you guys are a little close. Yeah, okay, yeah, so he does that thing. East. Something. Okay, so... So what he's talking about here is he's talking about uh, the vaccine, to put it, put it bluntly. He tries to kind of dance around the topic, but it's clear that he's talking about the vaccine. Um, and he's alluding that taking the vaccine makes you or uh, makes you something other than, than what you are and that you are uh, patentable by the drug company. This particular video is talking about gene modification and what it means to you as a U.S. national state citizen, American national national of America, geographical constitutional person being something like that. Free living soul, okay? Either way. You know, James, if you're going to rattle that off on every video, maybe you should really think about what it means, what, the, what it means to you. That's great. But, I mean, just think about what it means. Uh, because every time you do that, you are like, blah, 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 and it doesn't make any sense. Wait, what is it? Wolf, what is, what is it? What is it? What does it mean, Mike? What are you trying to say? I'm trying to say we're entering new grounds here where when they give you a, a shot, a jab. <clears throat> of the vaccine. And let's just say some of you guys don't know what's all in there, Okay. Most of you guys don't. Otherwise, you probably wouldn't take it. But anyway. Do you know what's in it, James? Like, tell, tell me an ingredient that's in it. Anything. And of course, it comes with all love, no disrespect to anybody by any means. But we're going to talk about one aspect of it. Now... You may have made claims to being yourself. If you're on my channel, you should have already put out your paperwork, your affidavits, your, your passport, you've updated them, um, you put things on notice, whatever. Okay, and your UCC1 even. Yeah, so he's implying that anybody who is watching this channel is already a sovereign citizen or U.S. national. Um, and uh, according to his definition anyway, and... Um, Anybody else should, there's no reason for anybody else to be on this channel. It's only for his people. Um, but that being said, when they add in, because remember, this particular, the materials that are in there are really, if you break down what they're saying, it's not actually a vaccine, it's a software upgrade. What? Software upgrade? I don't have software. Do you have software? I don't have software. Who is software? Which is a nice word, way of saying they're genetically modifying your structure. Okay, I get to need a source, James. Okay, or your, your, your rungs in your DNA, your cellular information, okay? Essentially what they're... Cellularic? Is that a word? What they're doing is they're forcing your, they're, they're coding it with a particular protein that sneaks by your immune system, which normally your immune system will reject it, okay? And it's then creating a code that then says, hey, make this particular strand of virus yourself. No, it doesn't. That's not how the vaccine works. And so your body does. No, it doesn't. Then your body attacks it. 
This is what's going on. According to who? That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. And when this happens... He's very dramatic. For one, it makes me go, well... So you're, you're giving it to us when I could just go out and get it myself. What's the problem with that? I don't understand. He has a problem with them giving the government, them being the government, um, them giving him the vaccine when he can just go out and get it? What's the problem? I don't understand. Okay, so there has to be something more to it, because why would, why would we not just herd immunity, everybody get it, and then once everybody gets it at the same time, for the most part, everything starts dropping because then, you know, everyone has it. That's not how herd immunity works. And then you're not taking into consideration the hundreds of thousands of people that are going to die if you were to approach a pandemic that way. Actually, the last president did approach the pan pan pandemic that way, and there's almost 700,000 people dead in the United States. Okay. Yeah, sure, each individual body is going to mutate it a little bit. No, they're not. But in general, that particular strain is pretty much, you know, so now we're going to move forward slowly, and we're going to slowly start to see some variants, to which case we all move forward and get it, the new version, just like when I was a kid, that 24-hour... That's not how herd immunity works. It's it, like, no, that... <laughs> Oh, it's a good thing he's not a doctor. For flu, well, shoot, it used to be a temporary flu, like the, you know, you just got it for a couple hours, and then it was a 20. When did you get the flu for a couple of hours? 24 hour flu, and then now it's the 48 hour flu. And I, it, now it's the 48 hour flu? Yeah, that thing for, it'll stay around for like a week, you know what I mean? Then it's not the 24 hour flu. Obviously, if it stays around for a week, then it's not the 24 hour flu. <laughs> And some of this has to do with people utilizing antibiotics and this and that and whatever, okay? So anyway, I digress. So in utilizing their software upgrade, there are some... i still confused about this software upgrade thing. Like, what the hell is he talking about? Potential things that we have to address. And like in the beginning when I said, are you all these things, it's because, remember... They're looking at most of us as cattle, product. Look it up. Commerce still talks about these things. Who? I'm sorry, I didn't catch the name. I don't know who that is. Never heard of him before. Do you have a name of a book, paper, uh, article, um, anything? Um, there are cases, old opinions, where they talked about this. Opinions are not facts. Kind of stuff, all right? And how they view us. You know, they being the government view us, the civilians, as cattle. Right. Those people who are U.S. citizens, I should say, they love and respect us U.S. nationals. OK, so I'm going to say this again. If you've been following me, watching these videos, there is no difference between a United States citizen and a United States national. There is no difference. Um, or American nationals. That being said, so now that you've received your, your software upgrade. I would love to get a software upgrade, man. Like, I need to lose some weight. Just, just, you know, just upgrade me and just take that away. Just, I just want to bypass that. That would be wonderful. The fact comes in that who owns that software upgrade well they do they have a patent on it okay i got nothing but the real issue comes in at do you still own you if they've genetically modified you and what proof are do you have that anybody has genetic and genetically and uh genetically uh modified anybody who? Who has this proof? Can I see it? Uh, I want to read it. Um, I would love to... I mean, am I going to get superpowers? That would be cool. 
they've, they've taken a product, put their label on. I mean, for, <clears throat> for all we know, we don't know on a subatomic level what name or number could be branded on those particular software up packages. These people are manipulating. On the subatomic level? I thought we were talking about genes and germs and DNA. Though it's bigger than the subatomic, that would be the atomic, I believe. I don't know. I'm not a physicist. Uh, what do I know? Uh, but um, subatomic, I don't think that qualifies. I don't think that applies here. Manipulating the genetic code. They could have their code for whatever company on there. So you're literally walking around with their code inside of your DNA. Cite your source. You know what I mean? Um, we don't know then if that makes you, can, can that make you a, a person? Can that make you, can they, can they patent you? Can they claim on no. ownership to you because of that? Now it might be easier just to say no. And obviously we don't have any, we don't have comp. Yeah, it was pretty easy. I said no, doesn't happen. Concrete proof of all this information, which is why I'm just talking, and just, just thoughts, and this is educational information. But if you're going to provide educational information, James, please make sure that it's actually educational, uh, something that actually contributes to a person's intellect and their their, their intelligence and their uh, well-being. There's nothing in anything that you say that is remotely educational. One viewer did send me this particular file. Now, it is a couple of years older, which also begs to ask the question of, of, they were already on this stuff years ago. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Oh, yeah. These, are, these conspiracy theories are nothing new. I'm sure this particular theory or conspiracy theory has been around since they've been vaccinating kids. Uh, when the first, maybe, the, I don't know, was it polio? Um, when, those first, when those vaccines started coming out, I'm sure there was somebody just dying uh, to start a conspiracy, conspiracy theory that the government was tampering with your I don't well they don't I don't think they had genetics back then but uh, um, yeah so this is a Supreme Court so the Supreme Court of the United States okay um, it's Association for molecular pathology and then myriad genetics okay so he's trying to tell us that he is rattling off the title of a u.s uh supreme court ruling i'm ima i'm imagining um but uh he hasn't given us enough information to look it up uh goes uh the united states court of appeals for federal circuit now this was titled number 12-398 argued April 15th, 2013, decided June 13th of 2013. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole thing because... Thank God. I don't think that you have mental capacity to understand it, first of all. It's in, it's, it's in actual legal speak, unlike your quantum grammar theory uh, that the way that legal documents should be written... Um, yeah, so this is actual normal legal speak, so, um, yeah. It is literally a lot. But essentially, they're arguing in here that the dioxide ribonucleic acid, or DNA, is, is patent eligible under 35 U.S.C., 101 by virtue of its isolation from the rest of the human genome. We also address the patent eligibility of synthetic DNA created DNA known as complementary. So, oh, a simple word like complementary. Complementary. Complementary DNA. I don't get it. He's he's reading an excerpt out of a US a US Supreme Court ruling um, with no context, um, we don't have the actual, uh, document he's reading. Um, so I have no reason to, to take what he is saying at face value. Um, I don't know if he's actually reading it or if he's just making it up. Um, so 
you gotta you gotta do better, James. They use baby soft words like that, so it sounds non-threatening, non-combatant, non-belligerent. I'm just gonna give you a little something, something, okay? Or C DNA. Seed DNA. Now, if this goes where I think it goes, because I've seen this video before, uh, he, I think he's going to start alluding to the uh, Monsanto conspiracy or scandal. I'm not sure what it was. It happened years ago. Uh, it was uh, genet had to do with gen uh, genetically modified soybeans. Um, if you want to look it up, it's Monsanto years ago. Um, yeah. So I think that's what he's talking about. But then again, we're not, um, that's not human DNA, that's plant DNA. Two very different things. I would think that would have been obvious. Which contains the same protein coding information found on a segment of natural DNA, but omits portions within the DNA segment that do not code for proteins. I didn't plan this, guys. I just literally read this as I was scrolling down and stopped. Right. So he just admits that what he's read is a, a passage out of context from a legal document that doesn't cut mustard, that doesn't pass the test here, man. You got to be, do better than that. You guys need to read these things. You need to edit your dead air. So I tell you, I haven't even read this whole thing. I literally Clearly. just read that to you, not, not scripted or anything like that. If you don't find any of that interesting or at least compelling or jarring, yeah. Well. I then started talking to pre-RNA, naturally spliced, physically removed introns. Okay, so he goes on for the rest of the document or the rest of the video trying to explain this uh, incredibly intricate legal document about DNA. Um... He doesn't do a very good job. But like I said, this video is full of nonsense. There's no truth. There are no facts. There are no citations. There's nothing. This video has nothing in it. Um, please, if you're going to listen to this guy, take what he says with a grain of salt. And I'm talking, take the whole damn shaker. Okay? Because this, this guy... He has no business telling other people how they should live. Okay? That's just the bottom line right there. He has no business telling anybody what they should do with their lives or how they should live. Um, because most of what, or I shouldn't say most, everything he says is absolute nonsense. It has nothing to do with anything. There's no facts. There's just his opinion and opinion of other like-minded people. Um, sorry, James, the world just doesn't work that way.